All right, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because I might make um, sort of a little series of these. Uh, this is going to be just one example that I'm showing you guys, uh, and it's from a Disney movie. So I'm showing you guys, this is going to be an example of how popular media and content can twist your mind, can mislead you, can cause you to think irrationally about things, um, can spoon feed you inaccurate information. And this one little example I'm showing you might seem silly, but it's actually, it's, it's really not in the long run. Um, first of all, this, all Disney movies are catered towards children. Um, so it's really just sort of the beginnings of misleading children starting to, to, um, break down a child's psyche and twist it inside out and, um, have them accept and absorb inaccurate, unrealistic information or ways of thinking about things. Uh, so Disney is, everybody knows Disney, everyone. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what your race is, your culture, your religion, your economic class in this world. Uh, probably at least 99% of all the people on the planet have either have at least heard of Disney and likely have seen at least one Disney movie, if not more likely several. Um, I grew up as a lower middle class American girl with two sisters. Uh, so we watched all of them, all the Disney movies that came out while I was a kid and even uh, into some of my adult years. Uh, we watched all the Disney movies. Our parents took us to the movie theaters every time one came out. Um, as, as soon as they were released on video, uh, they were bought. My family bought them. My grandparents bought them for us. My parents bought them for us. We were plopped down in front of the television. And um, um, it's Disney has, for as long as I can remember, always been considered to be good, wholesome, family-friendly, kid-friendly media and content and entertainment and, um, and chalked full of good lessons and so on and so forth. Um, but... It's really not. This, and again, this is just one example. I can think of a, quite a few examples from a few different Disney movies. I, I, I bet, I'll bet you that if I sat down and rewatched every Disney movie I've ever seen and really broke them down and analyzed them um, frame for frame, scene for scene, and made notes, I could find tons and tons and tons of troubling inaccuracies and things that are not very realistic. And I don't just mean not realistic in terms of, oh, talking animals or dragons or mermaids. I mean, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, so I'm going to play, I'm not even playing this whole video for you. So this video is a short clip from the movie Mulan, the Disney movie Mulan, based on a true story about a woman in China who dressed up like a man, pretended to be a man, and joined the army so that she could fight um, in the war. You should go watch the real story about, or watch, well, read the real story about what happened to the real Mulan when it was discovered she was a woman. I won't get into that. Um, I understand that Disney can't necessarily have these stories end the way they ended in real life. These are meant to be for children. I get that. But there's really, it's really not necessary to, to have certain phrases and things um, said in these movies that are so inaccurate as the one I'm about to play for you. Um, so again, I'm not playing this whole clip. It's only, th this clip is only 3 minutes, 29 seconds. I'm only going to play about, oh, between 40, 50 seconds of it. So hang in there for 40 to 50 seconds, please, and watch this little bit, and then I'm going to pause it again and and comment and point out to you exactly what was wrong is wrong here um this is just one little bit just one little tiny smidgety smidge of a an example from one disney movie and again there are so many but let's get into this um you you fight good oh 
Thank you. Khan, let's go home. The flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. Sir, you don't meet a girl like that every dynasty. Okay, so, um, the flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. Bullshit. I call bullshit right now. Um, just think on this. Ready, guys? Dandelions. Yeah, dandelions. Versus roses, or orchids, or lilies. Um, which one blooms more in adversity, and which one is more rare? Hmm. Hmm. I'd say the dandelion, which we call a weed, we call it a weed because you can't get rid of it. They're all over the place. Dandelions don't give a shit. They grow everywhere. They'll grow in, in next to no soil, in cracks and crevices between the sidewalk cement. Um, I've seen them growing on rooftops. They will grow wherever they can find just a tiny, tiny little bit of space to take root. And you can stomp up and down on dandelion. That thing just will tell you to go piss off and just spring right back up, won't it? They don't care. Like, And what's more is dandelions are actually quite good for you. They're, they're very nutritional. They're very healthy. Personally, I drink, I drink roasted dandelion root tea. You can eat dandelion salads. They help promote your body's natural detoxification process. We're quite lucky that they are so abundant, actually. Um... And they bloom in adversity. They they are some of the best plants at blooming in adversity. Anybody who's ever had a garden or a yard trying to keep dandelions out of it will tell you that. Yeah, those suckers <laughs> freaking can't get rid of them. So um, they bloom in adversity and they are most certainly not rare. The very fact that they can bloom in adversity means that they are likely not going to be rare. Most weeds are not rare. They're called weeds because they're around all over the place. And they're around all over the place because they bloom in adversity. And most weeds have flowers. As far as I know, I believe that most weeds have flowers or produce some sort of flower. Whereas most roses, like tropical orchids, things like that, they need very specialized care and very specialized environments. Um, and circumstances in order to do well. And they are far more rare than dandelions. So the flower that blooms in adversity is actually quite abundant. The flower, the flower that is rare does not do well in adversity. Okay, it, it need, It's like the princess in the pea, all right? It needs, it needs you to baby it, all right? <laughs> so, it does not make any sense logically. It's not realistic. Um, and, and, so how do, but, but you guys missed it, didn't you? Don't, I, I missed it too for a long time. Granted, I was a girl when I saw this. Um, I guess I was, well, I was like 12 when this came out. But, you know, my parents missed it. Most of, we all missed it. The how stupid that phrase was. And spoken by the Emperor of China. Emperor of China is a dumbass. <sighs> or more accurately, Disney is a dumbass. Or more accurately, Disney is full of shit. Um, so, <laughs> think about this, guys. Um, really think on it. Do you, do you believe, I mean, again, let's use our, put on our, our analytical thinking caps. Do you think that that phrase was just written in real quick? Fly by the seat of their pants, 
like half a second before they produ- they they sent the whole thing out to production? Do you think they just were like, we need to, we need something catchy, some kind of catchphrase for the emperor to say at the end? I know, I know, the flower that blooms in adversity, blah, de, blah, de, blah. No. Disney has hundreds, if not thousands, of people working on each and every one of these videos. These are major productions. Every single second, every single frame in these movies, every everything in the corner of the look at the the corner of this frame here. Everything was planned out. Okay, everything, including of course the script. What their characters say in every scene in this movie was agonized over by likely a group of people. They went back and forth figuring out what each character is going to say in every single scene. Out of the millions of phrases that they could have had the Emperor of China say to this dude at the end, they settled upon a phrase that is completely inaccurate and completely unrealistic. I understand that he is, was trying to make a point to this guy. I mean, he got to the point eventually because the dude was like, what, sir? He was like, that doesn't make sense, sir. The flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare. He's like, it's not realistic. It's probably what he meant to say, but didn't want to say it because he's the emperor. And then the emperor was like, yeah, shit, right? It doesn't make sense. All right, well, fine. You don't meet a girl like that every dynasty. Duh. You might want to consider putting a ring on it. She's pretty badass. Anyway, I get that was the point of what he was saying, but there were better ways for the emperor to say that. Um, if you wanted him to have it come out in, as, as some sort of obscure phrase that sounds like it's full of wisdom, ancient wisdom or whatever, there were other phrases they could have had him say. Um, that didn't sound so unrealistic and so inaccurate and so stupid. This is the emperor of China, mind you. This guy is supposed to be the emperor of China. You'd think he would be a little bit more accurate with his words, with his little analogies, or metaphors, what have you. Um, so, again, but again, this is a a cartoon character version of the Emperor of China. So it's really Disney. Uh, Disney sat, not Walt Disney, I'm pretty sure he's dead by this point, but the people who produced this for Disney sat around and thought and thought and thought and probably came up with a lot of different phrases that the Emperor could have said right there in this in that scene. and But they settled, they chose this one, this one specific phrase. How is it that you absorbed that? How is it that you don't, you, you didn't catch it. Let's be honest. I didn't catch it for a long time. Most people who watch this movie aren't going like immediately after the, the emperor says that they're not going like bullshit. They're not. Why? Cause you're swept away with the whole, with all the emotions, all the exhilaration, the ups and downs, um, the cortisol levels are pumping, the, the, um, the, um, um, adrenaline levels are pumping. Um, you, you've been taken on this sort of wild ride, Mr. Toad's wild ride of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to Mulan? You're so invested in the characters. Are they going to fall in love? Is she going to be discovered? Are they going to die? And, and so once you're in that state of mind, swept up in the adventure and the feelings, once they've got you in the feels, they know you're not thinking very analytically or rationally anymore. And that's when they start spoon feeding you inaccurate information and or very toxic and inaccurate ways of viewing the world or analyzing the world. Now, again, this might seem like a little stupid little thing in Disney that doesn't really matter but again keep in mind they're these movies are targeting children it's like this is this is just them starting off turning your children's minds inside out it gets worse as the content is 
it progresses and is produced for more for for older um, audiences. So, I I I know I certainly don't want my children to have a bunch of bullshit spoon fed to them, or have them taught by the content that they are um, watching. I don't want them to be taught to to observe and analyze the world in inaccurate ways, in unrealistic ways that will make them live in fantasy land about how the world really is. Um, yeah, so, and this is a common tactic. It's, this is a, a very commonly used technique for brainwashing people, for, for misleading people, um, cults, cult leaders use this tactic all the time. They get people riled up. They get them really angry about something. They get them, um, very excited about things. And, um, and it's easier than to control them. And it's easier than, than to get them to believe things, um, that they would not have otherwise believed. It's easier to get them to start shutting down their analytical, rational, um, mind and thinking. And then, well, then the game's all over. Now you've got them. Now you can convince them to do all kinds of stupid things like go out and start a riot in the streets and destroy private property and maybe even hurt people. Um, or, you know, any, all kinds of stuff. Uh, why? All because you got them caught up in the moment, you got them caught up in their feelings, and you got them to shut down their analytical thinking. Um, and, and they're already trained, basically this is like the, the training wheels of training your children. That's what Disney is. It's the training wheels on the bike, training your children how to not think rationally about the world and how to just get swept up in feelings. Um, so again, it might seem like a little, a little thing that's not a big deal. It is a big deal because this is just the beginning this is just them starting in on your children. Do you understand? Um, so, all right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm trying to keep these short. So, and uh, Disney can go F itself. I don't know how anybody in good conscience can work for Disney that that isn't a total moron. I mean, you're either nefarious or you're an idiot. Because once you start breaking down these movies and analyzing them and realizing like uh, they're really teaching children to not think properly about anything well then it's like um okay I don't want to be a part of this so ugh, enjoy your paycheck assholes jeez louise emperor trying to kiss my ass alright I'm ending it